Today on the show, we're going to be talking about Megan Gwynn, Pixie from the X-Men. If you didn't know that she went from being voted most friendliest student in the Xavier Institute to stabbing people that would harm her in the gut, then this show is for you. So Megan is actually from a town in the UK in Wales called Albergild. It's a mining town and her father would actually die in the mine, which led her to have a fear of her own town. So she left the town and went to the Xavier Institute. It is worth mentioning that later on she would find out that her father wasn't her father and her father is mastermind, making the mastermind sisters her half-sisters. Pixie is assigned to the Paragon's training squad and her mentor is Wolfsbane. Initially, she had the ability to produce hallucinogenic pixie dust and the natural gift of flight through her wings. But it is worth saying that she had a hard time with flying because she would have to wear a crash helmet in training because she really wasn't that comfortable with flight itself. This was a time just filled with bliss for Pixie, a very, very simple time in this character's story and she got along with everyone in the academy after most of the mutant population would lose their powers, Pixie is one of only 27 students at the school to retain their powers. Emma Frost would set up this battle royale to decide who would be in the new X-Men, and Pixie wouldn't make the team, but she would stay on at the school for her own safety more than anything else. One night, Pixie and several other students were being told a ghost story by Blindfold. But it turned out that this wasn't just a ghost story. Blindfold was reciting a prophecy to the students. Then out of nowhere, Blindfold turns around to Pixie, says, sorry for your loss, and a gateway to limbo would open up and would suck the students in. The students would be attacked by a horde of demons. And it's here that Pixie actually uses her powers on panel for the first ever time, which is where we know about the hallucinogenic pixie dust. But the group would quickly be saved by Ileana as Dark Child, and then she would turn around to Pixie and say that she wants Pixie's soul because Pixie currently has the most innocent soul in Limbo, and in Limbo, innocence is power, and you can utilize that to create a soul sword and bloodstones, which are incredibly powerful items made from innocent souls. Of course Pixie initially says no because that's her soul. It's an incredibly important part of a person. But then Ileana begins to torture Pixie's friends until she says yes. And a ritual would begin and would only be interrupted by Anol. But it was too late. Pixie's soul has already formed one bloodstone and created a soul dagger. After this, Pixie's hair would turn a mix of its natural pink color and jet black. Ileana explains that this is because part of Pixie's soul is now missing and it's filled with black magic. So this is the physical representation of the black magic inside of Pixie. Ileana teaches Pixie a teleportation spell which she uses to take herself, the other students, and Ileana to Belasco where other students are being tortured. Pixie would stab the demon with her soul dagger, effectively saving the day. But then Ileana turns around to Pixie again and says she wants to use more of her soul to create more bloodstones. But this is where Ileana's brother would call out to her. Ileana would realize what she's done and she would send the students back to their world and would seal off all entrances to Limbo, meaning Pixie has lost a bit of her soul to Ileana. After returning from Limbo, Pixie's put into the new X-Men for not backing down after such a traumatic thing had happened to her. She really showed how brave she was and earned her place on the team. After the first mutant baby since M-Day is born, Pixie and several other students decide to attack the Washington DC base of the anti-mutant purifiers. And here they're attacked by the Reavers and Lady Deathstrike. So Pixie panics, tries teleporting everyone back to Westchester and ends up scattering all of the students between Washington DC and Westchester. It was only thanks to Iceman that everyone got collected and taken back to the Academy, but this is when Predator X decides to attack the Academy. So Pixie had the idea that she would teleport Predator X to X-23 because X-23 had fought something like Predator X before, but she ends up failing, teleporting everyone to the final battle between the X-Men and the Marauders over the mutant baby, and here Pixie would be attacked. 
the mouse possessed Omega Sentinel is beating on Pixie, really making fun of her as well, saying, oh, the X-Men put their kids in charge these days. I hope you brought your lunchbox and your mittens. Then Pixie cuts her off mid-sentence, stabs her in the gut and says, no, but I've got my soul dagger. And I remember reading this and going, oh my God, Pixie is badass, which was something at the time I never really expected to say. And it really made me like this character a lot. Pixie would go back to her home in Wales, have a brief adventure here involving demons. It didn't really have any long lasting repercussions other than Pixie loses her fear of her hometown and the mine in her hometown. And then the X-Men would come and meet up with her and say, hey, come to San Francisco with us. And she goes, okay and goes to San Francisco. After going to see Dazzler perform one night, Pixie is on her way back to the X-Men, and here she is attacked by a group of anti-mutant extremists and is left bloody and bruised on the side of the road. She's eventually able to hobble back to the X-Men and is quickly seen to, but she actually contemplates leaving them and just going back to Wales, but Wolverine convinces her to stay. Pixie decides to help the X-Men fight Empath, and here she is forced to stab Empath in the head with her soul dagger. This weakens Empath's powers, but blinds him. Around this time, Pixie kind of fell into the role of the X-Men's main teleporter. And because of this, Nightcrawler got a little bit jealous. But one day, Nightcrawler and Pixie would be talking about the events of what happened one year ago in Limbo. And Pixie would reveal that she's still really traumatized by the events of Limbo, saying that a child should never have had to go through that. And that's all she was, was a child. She ends up going totally apeshit, summoning her soul dagger and stabbing Nightcrawler in the chest, thus revealing Ileana's soul sword was actually in Nightcrawler all along. Ileana would turn up, reclaim her soul sword, Pixie would attack Ileana, demanding that she fix her soul, and Ileana would beat up Pixie and go back to Limbo, but she wouldn't seal off the gates to Limbo, so the X-Men decide to go after her. In Limbo, Ileana is fighting Witchfire, and then Witchfire takes Pixie's bloodstone from Ileana and puts it into an amulet, and this forces Pixie to teleport to Witchfire, and then Witchfire would steal even more of Pixie's soul and create another bloodstone, meaning Pixie has lost more of her soul. Pixie and Ileana are able to work together to destroy this amulet and save themselves from Witchfire, but Pixie does ultimately end up losing more of her soul because it ends up going into one of the soul blades. Because Pixie's lost more of her soul, she ends up living off of negative emotions even more. She gets a lot more angry than she used to. Like when Proposition X came about, she got extremely angry, ended up getting involved in riots and getting badly, badly hurt. But it is worth saying she was useful around this time because she was able to teleport more mutants to San Francisco because the X-Men needed help really badly. And when the mutants decided to relocate to Utopia, Pixie and Ileana would actually be the two that teleport all of them there. So she was a huge help around this time. Around this time, there will be a series called Pixie Strikes Back, and this is the series where we find out that Pixie's father is actually Mastermind, making her sisters the Mastermind sisters. Ileana would be tricked in going back to Limbo by using a weaponized spell, and Pixie would be part of the team that has to go to Limbo to go and get Ileana back. And here, a demon would try and convince Pixie to kill Ileana, but Pixie actually ends up working with Ileana to destroy the demon. The two girls kind of come to understand each other even more and begin bonding with each other. After this, Pixie would decide, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with all of this. I need a break. I need to just get away and chillax. So she takes herself on holiday. And here she would be kidnapped by Project Purgatory. They would take Pixie's soul dagger, then capture the new mutants and use Ileana's soul sword to separate the bloodstones from Pixie's soul dagger, effectively giving Pixie a soul back, but Pixie has to escape without the bloodstones and her soul dagger, meaning she came very, very close to getting her soul back and now it's gone once again. But at the end of this storyline, Ileana walks into Pixie's room with a golden box and inside this golden box is Pixie's soul dagger and the bloodstones meaning she's got her soul back, all thanks to the person that initially took it. 
Pixie would end up becoming a bit of a side character after this. She would have a brief encounter with Hope Summers when she ends up kissing Velocidad, not realizing Velocidad was in a relationship with Hope Summers, so Hope would storm away, and Pixie puts two and two together and slaps Velocidad, calling him a twat, which is one of my favorite panels in comic books ever. Hope actually asks Pixie to join her team because they don't have a teleporter and they need a teleporter. And then shortly after this, Avengers vs X-Men, where Pixie goes to the Avengers Academy. After this, it will be Wolverine and the X-Men, where Pixie graduates from Westchester as a fully-fledged X-Man. I want a Pixie solo series so badly, if it doesn't happen soon, I'm just gonna write it and send it into Marvel and be like, hey, I did your job for you. Because people would buy that. People love Pixie. If I were to write a Pixie series, I would kind of structure it a bit like Sailor Moon, weirdly enough. Not really in the sense that I'd have her be a magical girl, but I would kind of want it to be an entry to comics for anime fans and an entry to anime for comic book fans, if that makes sense. But what you guys need to remember is even if you haven't heard of Pixie, comic fans that have heard of Pixie absolutely love her. She is not some bottom of the barrel character. She's a really important character and really well loved, especially by me. Okay guys, that is it for today. Leave a comment down below letting me know if you think I forgot anything majorly important about Pixie. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more history videos. And also don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, support the show by checking out my Patreon so I can make bigger and better and more history videos. And also don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.